this is Donna Smith from the Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation Office. I'm here to have the great pleasure of introducing our 2021 Farm Family of the Year. We are here to congratulate Tom and Dottie Gannon and their family on the recognition for being the Farm Family of the Year. Welcome. Or I should say, thank you for having us in your house. Um, we're so very proud and so excited to say congratulations to Dottie and Tom and your family on being recognized as Farm Family of the Year. Well, thank you. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, you fun. were nominated and voted on by your local agriculture advisory board, which are five local farmers, and they selected you from a list of families and decided that she would be the great candidate for the Queen Anne's County Fair in August. So we're here to talk about your family and how you came to this point of being recognized as Farm Family of the Year. Um, I have known both of you for a long time and I know you've been involved with community services, community projects, 4-H, um, the fair, and just all kinds of stuff. So let's start with you, Dottie. <coughs> Tell me about your family. Where were you from? Where were you born and raised? Well, did, did not grow up on a farm. I uh, was born in Baltimore County. And my father had gotten transferred. He was a state police officer. And he got transferred to Somerville Barracks. Okay. When I was about probably 12. And um, he, I guess for a little bit, decided to commute. And then he... Uh, moved us here. Okay. So about 13. We lived around Queenstown. Right. And um, so, yeah, a lot of my life spent, you know, there. So you were kind of um, in the rural area, but you never really grew up on a farm? Did not. That's interesting. No. Mm -hmm. So um, let's get to the chase. How did you meet this wonderful husband of yours, Mr. <laughs> Tom? <laughs> well, of course, we went to school together. Right. Yeah. And uh, he was a year ahead of me in mm -hmm. high school. And um, it was actually after you graduated that we started dating. We were 17 when we right. started dating. Yes. And um, yeah, so kind of stuck together. I think maybe broke up a time or so and got <laughs> together again. And All right, Tom, what did so you do? <laughs> <laughs> we stuck it out. So. That's, that's good. Was that another story for another day? It probably is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Tom, so tell us your story. Where were you born and raised? Uh, well, we, Dad and Mom lived in Centerville. Okay. And uh, on a farm outside of Centerville when I was born. And uh, we lived on the farm there um, until we moved here. We got married and we bought this farm and moved here outside of Star. Okay. All right. So you've been here how many years? Oh, gosh. Since 92. So, right. so mm -hmm. what's that, 30 years next year? Yeah, 30 yeah. years. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, Tom, what did your did your parents farm? They did. About a Centerville. Um, well, my my dad's family farmed, and my mother's family immigrated from Germany. Oh, that's and, interesting. And uh, they immigrated in the '30s and moved to Cambridge. Right. And uh, my mother went to school at uh, the nursing school at the uh, hospital in mm -hmm. Easton, and that's where Dad met her. And that's when that you know they dated and got married. So um, <clears throat> Dad's family uh, basically farmed around uh, between Y Mills and uh, Queen Anne. Right. right. In that area. So what kind of farming did your family do when you were growing up on the farm outside of Centerville? Well, they grain farmed. They uh, had poultry house. Right. Raised chickens and also raised beef cattle and sheep. Okay. So, uh, so what kind of pushed you in the direction of Miss Dottie here uh, when you saw her in high school and decided after you graduated, <laughs> okay, we just need to go out. So, well, I mean, she wasn't a farm girl. Well, yeah, we all know well, that farm kids kind of gravitate together in high school. Yeah. I mean, they do. Yeah. I don't know. I she. I guess I chased her until she caught me. So. <laughs> Until she caught you. Okay, that's good. That's he, he always says he thought he was marrying money, but he oh. made a mistake, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it was actually for love. Isn't that nice? That's a good thing. Yeah. So here we are 30 years later, and you're well established. Um, so do you still have the farm in Centerville where your mom and dad lived? We do. Uh, it's Our family owns it. My uh, brother's sons and mm -hmm. my sister and I own it. Great. Great, so now how much do you all farm? 
And what do you do on the farm? What do you grow? It, we till a little more than 1,300 acres, and it's mainly uh, corn and soybeans. We grow a small amount of wheat for bedding, right. uh, straw for our pigs, and we raise hogs. Okay. So talk about the pigs. What kind of pigs do you have? We buy, uh, we grow it for a, um, it's an all natural product. It's a specialty product. Right. Um, we buy small pigs, they're 15 pounds, and we feed them up to 285 pounds. Okay. And, and it's all marketed through Lighties, mm -hmm. which, which they have an all natural product. And we've been doing that since 16, five years. That's great. Awesome. That's good. So, Doc, tell us about your family. Um, from what you have said, one of your daughters is not here today. So, tell us about your oldest daughter, and then, if you wouldn't mind, introduce the rest of your family to us. If mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so, Catherine's our oldest. Um, mm -hmm. we, she's uh, 34 now, and she's um, gone the healthcare route. She's great. Uh, did registered nurse and then um, nurse practitioner, and she's working down in Salisbury. Um, in a neurology office. That's so, wonderful. Yeah, really liking it. So yes. Monday through Friday kind of job. So mm -hmm. you know, so that takes up majority, you know, of her time. Right. And then um, probably early part of the year, by December, maybe you guys moved over towards the Millsboro area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're uh, with Brian um, or over there now. Right. And this is way. Brian, your grandson, this correct? Brian. The one and only grandchild. <laughs> so far. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. We got Brian. Yeah. Okay. Then who do we have next? And then um, Dot is our middle, Dot's 32, and um, Dot had gone to school um, to do respiratory therapy and has been working at the hospital down at Easton for five, six years now, since 15. 15. Yeah, yeah. That's great. So, yeah, so good job, hours you want, and three days a week. So, wow, that's awesome, Dot. <laughs> with that being yeah. said, three days a week, we can Use her. <laughs> yes, oh, use her. Use her. Use so her. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. And who's this gentleman sitting next to you, Dot? So this is my husband, Dale. Hi, Dale. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> uh, sounds like to me you folded right into the family here. Yeah. 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 You too? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Hit my other wing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. that's great. That's great. And who do we have next? Then uh, Jen is our youngest. Mm -hmm. Jen's 21 this year. So. And Jen's been, uh, of course, graduated in 18, so for the past few years she's been between school and jobs all, uh, off the farm and a lot of time spent on the farm with us. And Jen, um, what are you doing since you've graduated from high school? I'm at the University of Maryland right now doing Great. ag business. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So what is your ultimate goal with the ag business degree? Probably come back in. I like working with the pigs. That's probably like my favorite thing to run here. That's great. And then I hope in the fall with harvest somewhat. And then, I don't know, I like agritourism, so maybe one day. Oh, there's lots out. of opportunities for that yeah. in the county. So <laughs> that's great. Cool. So that's great. We've met your family. Um, so Dot and Tom, uh, we touched on a little bit about community <clears> service. <throat> Tell us about how you all got involved with the fair and 4-H. Mm -hmm. mm. That's been a long time ago, but... <laughs> did you both do 4-H or were ever involved? I didn't fair? do 4-H growing up, but... we were. I was in 4-H growing up, and uh, when when our oldest daughter started in 4-H, we, we just thought the right thing to do would be to volunteer and help. Sure. So that's kind of how we got started. Uh, I got on the fair committee and the park board uh, and stayed... I, I'm still on the fair committee. Yes. Now, uh, and I'm back on the park board as a treasurer. Great. Dottie, and what were some of the things that you did down at the fair for many years? Um, just really the horse <clears throat> barn, the sheep barn, whatever needed uh, doing. We chaired the sheep barn for some years, uh, so organizing that during fair week. And um, horse barn keeps you busy. I'm uh, sure it does. You know, and as everybody knows, the kids in 4-H, you know, they got a few different projects here. Kids and you're all running in circles. So. Especially when you're chairing something, then you're trying to go watch your kids show mm -hmm. and fit in, feeding the animals <laughs> yeah. and watching them. Watching the clock. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And um, from what I understand, you all had a club at one time. Is that correct? 4 H club? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we um, took over Penny Express, uh, the horse club, in 14, I guess it was, and um, led that through really through early 20 just before COVID hit and things kind of shut down. Right. So, yeah, 
for five years plus. We did Great. that. And Great. Loved it. Yeah. yeah. Dot, tell us about your 4-H experience. What did you show when you were in 4-H? Showed horses, showed sheep, and I guess we had pigs for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we did. But yeah. And rabbits. And um, rabbits. Started out with rabbits. rabbits. Yeah. 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 And for those that are not familiar with 4 H, tell them how long you work ahead of time preparing for the fair. Oh my gosh, yeah, months probably preparing. Yeah, decorations for the fair, getting your animals ready, getting yourself ready. <laughs> and when you go down to the fair, it's not all fun and games. So what what time does the alarm clock usually go off during the fair? Oh gosh, early. I don't even know what time you go. <laughs> I mean, you to, yeah, I mean, pretty much five o'clock, yeah, six o'clock right, every Jean. morning. Yeah, and then it went till 10, 11 o'clock at night, pretty much every night. Yeah, show days. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get up. Jen, there was many a times I saw you walking by the ice cream booth at 10 30 at night when I was closing down and you were. And yeah. Snack. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Brian, I understand you were involved with 4 H too. Yeah. And what did you show? I only showed sheep. Yeah. How'd you like that? It was pretty nice. Did you share them yourself? No, I had to have help, but yeah. I can do them by myself by myself. Right. Do you still show? No, I don't. Got out of it? Yeah. And tell us what you're getting ready to do in the fall. I'm going to start high school in Sussex Tech. Right. Now, do you have your kind of pathway figured out or still trying to figure out what you want to do or just get into high school and just see how it is? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do. I'm kind of all over the place. That's know. okay. And how old are you? 14. So you have the right to be all over the place. <laughs> 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 Tell us what you do. I'm a crane operator for a marine construction company. Oh, I bet that's interesting. Yeah. Hot yeah. days out on the water. Yes. You, know, you see, I'm crazy tan, but yeah. you know, <laughs> out there just uh, make piers and bulkheads and stuff. Great. Boat ramps. So that's tell us how you met this lovely Miss Dot. <laughs> um, I met her uh, through her older sisters, mutual friends. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Dottie? Dottie, they'll have, uh, they've started raising Angus beef, too. Great! Yeah. yeah um, That's awesome. On their so are you raising yeah. them to finish off and sell them, or? Yes. Are you, are you now, is it like show cows or just regular beef? Just regular beef. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's awesome. So, Dot and Tom, let's talk about the farm. Um, over the years of farming <clears throat> with your parents and having a chicken house and now pigs and all kinds of stuff. What do you think has been the most challenging for you mm -hmm. on the farm? I guess the first thing you would come to mind is the weather, but I really think deer really? are the worst of it all. So tell us why. Well, there's so much damage and, uh, you know, it seems like the deer numbers are exploding. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I was on a board years ago, the Maryland Grain Producers, and that was a consensus, I think, amongst all the growers was that was the biggest problem around the state. And a lot of it is where, um, you know, the urban spread is. Yes. Uh, there's no hunting anymore, so deer just flourish. And, uh, right. And uh, I don't know what the damage to crops are, but it, it is a lot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you mentioned grain producers. What is that? What is that organization? Tell us a little bit about what grain producers is. It is a board of farmers throughout the whole can the whole state, and it's funded through a checkoff from um, corn mm -hmm. uh, and several other uh, commodities. Uh, soybean checkoff goes to their board. I yes. think that's the only one that doesn't go to the grain producers. Right, and. Um, their job is to promote um, exports, mm -hmm. uh, education, um, and research. Right. And they fund like the University of Maryland research programs. It's a really good group to be involved with because you know you'll learn an awful lot about how all that comes together yes. and works. The only thing that was kind of frustrating at first was. I think in the last 20, up to the last 20 years, it was all about um, yields. You know, how can we how can we get more yields and um, develop exports? And now it's I think as much 
in um, environmental protection, right? Which is a good thing. It's something that needs to be done, but um, but it it I think now that probably commands as much attention, right? As production or you know exports. Do you feel as though that's a big focus point because we are right on the Chesapeake Bay? Yes. Locally. Mm -hmm. Yes, and 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 I think it's well deserved. You know, it's something that we need mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's something that most all farmers want to do. You know, there's, nobody wants to um, damage the bay or the water. Yeah, that's very important because we, you know, the people that don't farm need to understand what good stewards of the land farmers are. Mm -hmm. You know, they take care of their land, they take care of their soil, they're taking care of their crops, they're taking care of their family and their business. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the bottom line. Right. We all want the Chesapeake Bay to be healthy, but we also need to make a living. And there's, you know, there can be a balanced composition there between agriculture and the Chesapeake Bay. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that grain producers started on, uh, they were one of the first ones to start in with the uh, Farm to Harvest program. Yes. And uh, they fund a, a substantial amount of that. And, um, and I think the what we perceived from our side was uh, urban people don't understand like what we're trying to accomplish yes. as far as uh, protecting the bay right um, you know a lot of the precision ag now is for uh, nutrient management nutrient placement and I don't think you know that gets enough you know airtime for them right Miss Jen, what do you think that you had available to you as quote unquote a farm kid um, that other maybe town kids didn't have or kids that live maybe on Ken Island, you know, in a, in a community or something? Tell us how, what you, you were involved with FFA, very involved, um, that you saw with the kids in high school that they didn't know that you had readily available to you. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is like when you're like growing up, I agree, you have like space to like go and explore and like, like we have horses, so we go like trail riding and like goof off outside. But I think other right. kids, you know, you grow up like in neighborhoods and things like that, you just miss that experience outside, you know, you miss the outdoors. But but it's not always fun. Well, <laughs> it's a lot of hard work too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like taking care of the pigs. Yes. Yeah, that, I'm sure that's, that's <laughs> tough. What about you, Dot? What do you think? What I mean, what did you say now that you're married and out on your own that you kind of look back and you think, you know, I was really lucky to have that? I definitely have to agree with Jen in the space. Because um, riding horses, you could just hop one and ride anywhere, really. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was always really nice. Um, and we had cousins that grew up right across the road. So <laughs> we kind of had the neighborhood aspect a little bit covered there, but... Two or three houses were your neighborhood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So Dan, what's been, what has it been like for you in a farm? Did you grow up on a farm or? Um, I didn't grow up on a farm, but my grandparents were dairy farmers in Millington. Oh, okay. And uh, I grew yeah. up in Sellersville. So we kind of lived outside of town. And it was kind of open, just like this. But right. uh, you yeah, just be able to do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Like you can just go outside and just be loud. Be loud, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, just uh, get a different work ethic out here. You know what I mean? Just uh, you know. You, Things that you would think that are dirty, you just kind of like it. Just that's everyday life, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Um, but yeah, just just the space. I agree with them. Just being out of your freedom, not have someone next door to you. You right. know. Right. So, Donnie, what would you say to your next generation? You've got a grandson now, and hopefully, in the future, you'll have some more grandchildren. What What do you want them to know about farm life? You didn't come from a farm. Right. I mean, you were. You were from across the bridge, and yeah. you know some people will call you an implant, but we'll never do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, sure am. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, with you not having any really farm background experience, and now that you've done it your entire married life, yeah. and you're passing that along to the next generation, which are your kids, mm -hmm. and now you've got Brian, and you know, what do you want to? What do you want them to take with them? Mm -hmm. um, I think. Uh, because, uh, you know, when Tom and I married, and that was kind of my first exposure to driving tractors and mm -hmm. helping out there with them, and I appreciate it a lot, you know, because uh, I've seen both sides. Yes. And I wouldn't want it any other way at this point. So I, um, I want for them that same love 
of agriculture that we have. Right. Same love um, and appreciation for open spaces and farms and preserving mm -hmm. um, that, you know, down the road. Right. Um, which is important, you know. Uh, you know, this farm here, uh, Tom's family's farm, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully it'll be in the family for years to come. Yep. Um, you always see those century farms, and that's a pretty tall feat, but hopefully, you know, we've got, what, 31 years here so far? 69 <laughs> more. Well, Brian's only 14. you got a long way to go, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just appreciate, um, you know, what nature has to offer and right. uh, what agriculture, the life in ag has to offer. Yeah, it's pretty. Animals and, you know, crops. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Tom, what do you think has been your greatest accomplishment? <clears throat> I guess just surviving <laughs> <laughs> with, with three daughters uh, that really have done a lot. Uh, they run all the equipment now, pretty much. Um, you know, as far as running uh, in the fall, I drive the trucks, they run the combine, uh, mm -hmm. the grain cart, you know, um, I'm the only truck driver, so, you know, they, they're to the point now where they can run every, all the equipment, and uh, which is a big relief. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, anything being tore up because uh, stuff still breaks down, but it's really good. That's interesting that you say that. You've got three daughters, um, and they can run any piece of equipment, mm -hmm. there, pretty much. Um, and it sounds like they do it very well, because if you're not concerned about anything being torn up. Um, you know, sometimes there's a misperception that <laughs> the women on the farm stay in the house and cook and clean and prepare meals, but it's not like that today, is it? No. No, and that wasn't an option for us. Uh, you know, it's like now when we, uh, in, the, in our hog operation, when we sort, um, it takes five of us to sort, and they sort pigs. Dale helps, uh, and the girls. Uh, what does that mean, sort? Explain that to us. Well, what we'll do is, and usually Jen and Dot will go through and mark the larger hogs, the ones that are ready to market. Right. So they'll go through like a, it's a livestock marker. They'll mark them, and then we'll have to separate them to a pin where where we'll load them out. Right. So it takes us a couple hours to sort 100, 140 head out. Right. So it's a long day some days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it's it's a tough life at times. We all know right now we've, everybody's got beautiful crops, but they're looking a little stressed. Mm -hmm. um, and you said weather was the biggest you know factor here, and um, some adjacent areas have been able to get rain, but there's a lot of places that haven't, and right. it's very difficult. And you can touch on that, Tom. You plan it, you have the hope that you're going to have a great crop, and then it gets dry. And you see that beautiful corn and those beautiful soybeans not looking so beautiful right. anymore. Right, and with the temperature we've got now, it doesn't take long to go from 100% potential to half. Yes. And I think that's where some of our corn is now, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on the lighter soils. Yes. Where we've not gotten rain. Dot, mm -hmm. over the years, um, looking back now that you're out on your own can you remember some times with your parents that, that you could see that it was really tough on them with the farm they always made it look easy <laughs> so no it didn't nothing ever sticks out to me like that they that's great yeah so they were per they had their feet solidly planted and you as kids didn't recognize if there wasn't times that were a little stressful no it was always good for us <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Jen? I think I agree. It's always fun. Like, mom and dad make it fun to work here. So it's not like new outside. It's like a chore to like sort pigs. It's like fun. Like, we all laugh. And if one of us falls down, everyone laughs. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Brian, yeah. do you ever help sort the pigs? Yeah, a little. Yeah. How do you, how do you like that? It's fun sometimes, like she said. So, you just make it all work as a family. Do you get involved in that too? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it sounds like to me you've got a solid family unit. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and I and I have to say, you know, the healthcare system is very challenging at this point. So, 
kudos to you. That that's Thank great. You. And you know, water work is never easy. Hmm. And David, let, so let me ask you a question. You know, um, Tom talked about the Chesapeake Bay. You work on the water. Mm -hmm. So over the years since you've been doing that, how, what have you seen with the bay? Um, have you seen improvement, or are you seeing decline, or do you think it's good, or? It's hit or miss. It's like last year we got a ton of rain. Yes. You know what I mean? So it kind of like just made everything a lot different. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. crabs are different, rockfish are different, and uh, like I said, it's always hit or miss. And then sometimes you get like these uh, algae blooms where the bay looks terrible, mm -hmm. you know, and then it kind of cleans itself up. But right. um, I did that oyster restoration down in the, just a little chop tank, and the Harris Creek down yes. in Stoneman Island years mm -hmm. ago, and um, I hope it's working, you know. They're trying to clean it up. But right. As far as seeing it good, I, I just kind of see it the same, you know. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, if it's the same, that doesn't mean it's getting any worse. So that's a good. That's a positive. Yeah. yeah. So, is there anything that is unique to you as a family? Well, I guess every year around like when it's cold out, like January, February, we'll mm -hmm. butcher like two or three pigs on our own and make scrapple out of it. So that's always fun. And it's fun to like learn the process because I feel like it's like a lost art kind of. Yes. Everyone buys from the store, but you never get to make it. Yeah. And sausage too. Mm -hmm. What else? That's really it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what we, right. Yeah. So you have your hog butcher in day. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Or it's processing, fun. I should say. Yeah. That right. sounds a little better. Yeah. And you take it for granted that you're going to get good scrapple in the store, and that's not always the case. Yeah. <laughs> so I would bet the churros is probably really good. Yeah. It is. It's, yeah. It's, it's fun. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scrapple's good, no matter what. And we never yeah. knew that it was good, like, as gravy, like, before it's, like, oh, oh look yeah. at that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Scrapple but gravy. It's still, like, liquid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'll see. Yeah. Now we just learned something. There you go. <laughs> I never knew there was such a thing as scrapple gravy. There you go. So the Gannon family's got the market on that. There you go. It sounds like we could market it like that as gravy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Make some money back. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. You all yeah. have certainly earned this. You have yeah. had many, many years of boards, fair, 4-H, clubs. Mm. You know, if it isn't for families like you, the fairs and the 4-H stuff doesn't function. That's a fact. You know, it's a community thing. It's 100% volunteer work. And if you don't give your time, then these kids can't continue with 4-H. So thank you for that. Yeah. You know, and you turn that back around, and I think that's great. Like you said, it's only right when your kids are involved in 4-H that you volunteer it back. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. And um, Brian, good luck in high school next year. Thank Jen, you. good luck in your next year of college. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You go, girl, <laughs> and the healthcare system, the hospital. I just, I, I admire you very much for that. I really thank do. You. Dale, stay cool on the water. Good deal, thank you. And hopefully we'll get a nice inch of rain in the next day oh, or so. Okay. Hope so. That would just be fantastic. Again, congratulations. Well-deserved family. And we'll see you at the fair on Wednesday night, August the 11th, at 545 at the main showroom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it.